Welcome to the Super Spy Podcast. Oh boy, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, rock stars everywhere. This one may just hurt a little bit. And primarily because, you know, sometimes the truth just hurts. But remember, and it's something I, I, I've i known and I've thought about for a while, but it was never uh, defined better uh, until I heard the music of the group Extreme. And they had a, a, a titled album uh, called There's Three... Or, Three Sides to Every Story. So three sides to every story. Mine, yours, and the truth. And and personally, I I look at it because there's so much going on in our world uh, that we do. We do need to stop and remind ourselves of what is our role on this planet. For those of you that follow me regularly, uh, I did take a week off, and I I didn't announce it. Uh, I didn't really plan it. Uh, I was just so worn out, worn out of the of the of the death of so many children, Uh, but even more worn out about the politicizing of uh, those those that tragedy. I should say not just not just the deaths, the entire thing. And if you start looking all the conspiracy theories. And everything else, I, I'm tired of it. And and the truth is, no one wants to look at the truth. I have continually lived with the following mantra: God has a purpose for me. Evil does exist, but good will always prevail. Did you catch that? God has a purpose for me. Evil exists, and good will always prevail. This past weekend, I I celebrated a major milestone uh, as far as uh, birthdays. I won't, well, I don't care. Uh, I hit hit the 60 mark. And to tell you quite honestly, I believe age is just a number. And you are as old as you feel, as old as you act, and as old as you want to be. Now, that's something you could take as a choice. However, when it comes down to it, the doctor says, you're 60 years old, I need to check something, and it's something that you don't normally want me to check. So there's a little bit of reality to my life. Uh, But God does have a purpose for me. Uh, it, it's not, you know, it could be my job. I don't know. I know my family is a great purpose for me. Uh, and I have many close friends and, and I look around and, and I see all the potential out there of things that I can eff- affect, um, positively. Okay. To include my neighbors, uh, and, and, my 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 community but understand one thing i remember is that and that i will always believe is that there is a purpose for me and that purpose is assigned to me by a greater power than I. but of course i was brought back down to earth uh and we were all reminded that evil i was going to say sin but we know that look evil does exist and it's it's doing very well in this world and that is so disheartening but within that evil people start to make stupid choices stupid comments and this is why i hate politics because the politicians immediately started to jump on different bandwagons and each one of them claiming we have to protect our children. We have to understand that our children are our future. And I was waiting for them to start playing that song in the background. 
and you know ma- making campaign promises or or making you know a uh, uh, affirmations of of their of their commitment uh to end gun violence because it's all about the kids well let me tell you ladies and gentlemen if they are serious about protecting the children if they are serious about gun violence then why don't they take the action uh, and it, this is radical the action that i have proposed year after year after every one of these shootings that well since since the uh, las vegas shooter i i i just started sending letters to well former uh politicians uh, from the state of New Mexico where I used to live and then I, I'm now sending them to politicians in Arkansas and a few politicians in uh, states where these tragedies have occurred and the reason I'm doing it is because I care for the children but I don't have a political you know hidden agenda and every one of them do, even our neighbor to the north. What the heck are they thinking that they're going to put a cap on gun ownership effective immediately? Give me a break. So no one in Canada will be able to buy a, a gun or import a gun or transfer a gun or anything like that. Can you imagine if, you know, the way of life that is being destroyed because of that? And once again, I I want you guys to really think about this. How does this law not affect the Native Americans up there in Canada and the the hunters, uh, the people who go out hunting, the responsible gun owners? Again, the Native Americans, they hunt and use guns and pass it down to family members. And now they're not going to be able to do this? Come on, this is ludicrous. Let me give you my idea of gun violence deterrence. And I'm going to slow down so that I don't get worked up here. If you commit a crime and you use a gun in an aggressive manner and you are found guilty of said crime your punishment is death end of story a gun when used properly is for hunting and for self defense mostly uh i will say home defense and please politicians don't nay nay my idea because every one of you have armed guards. So that is called responsible gun usage. So the key here is using a gun responsibly and non-aggressively. If you use a gun in an aggressive manner and commit a crime and are found guilty of that crime, you will be put to death. And here's the added uh, benefit for us taxpayers. If you commit a crime using a gun in an aggressive manner, whether anyone is killed or not, you're going to be put to death. And while you are in jail awaiting execution, your family will foot the bill instead of taxpayers. Your family will, will pay for your prison stay your family will pay for your prison meals if you choose to watch tv in prison in your cell your family will pay the cable bill if you actually kill someone with a gun during the commission of a crime then not only once you are proven guilty not only will your family have to pay for your stay in prison as you await execution, but your family 
will also have to compensate the victim's family or families. It's nothing that you are going to get away with, and it's nothing that the taxpayers will have to, you know, take the burden for. So the harshest of laws is called a deterrence. And I believe that if you take this idea, if you politicians take this idea, then you will have slowed down, at least, the gun violence in our country. But you have to remember, you really want to curb gun violence, you must attack it at the source. You don't want to destroy the livelihood of others. You don't want to, once again, screw over the Native Americans who hunt for their livelihoods. You know, stupid politicians don't understand that these guns, when used responsibly, are working parts of society. And let me urge you that once that you, since you want to use kids as as your political banner, if you do it my way, which is probably one of the smartest ways you've ever heard, then after we're done with the gun legislation, then start addressing the poor kids that are killed every year in car accidents. Start addressing the alcohol-related deaths among children. How about the drug-related deaths? Or, dare I say, abortion. Are you guys really serious about protecting our children, then I suggest you start with the harshest of rules for crimes that use handguns or long guns irresponsibly. Remember, there are three sides to every story, and we need to address the senseless death that are occurring on our soil. And the only way to do that is by tough legislation, tough laws, tough punishment on the evil doers. Do not infringe on the rights of those that are doing things properly. That, my friends, is the truth. Super Spy is out. Stay safe, America, and remember, we are only a decent society if we are decent people.